afternoon and welcome to the Dice Hour. I'm Tom Vassell. What's happening, everybody? My name is Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. This is ridiculous. You should be wearing your hat sideways or that something. That is ridiculous. Like, thematic, we should have come in with like a pants on our arms or well, something. Well, you can't see the bottom half of me, but I am sans shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he lies. <laughs> He's got shoes, but uh, that's uh, about it. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. Before we get into this, we just wanted to tell you that our Dice Hour merchandise store is live. If you want to get a shirt where, with Mike's face on it, or his Dice Guy's face, dice guy, or yeah. other things, if check this, out... If they had a shirt with Mike's face, then Dice Tower... Uh, what is it? Dice Tower merch? Store. Dice Tower store. 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 would be come crashing down. We would have to hire a significant number of people to staff that uh, We would store. need a whole new server. That's correct. We need to like get into one of those Amazon warehouses, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. DiceTowerStore.com is where you want to be. Mm. You go there For enough. For merchandise, yes. Maybe you'll, you'll you'll check it out. Anyhow, you can get massive asterisk. <laughs> All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous games. It's been a while. It feels like it's been a long time since we did a top ten. It does. It was before Essen, right? It's been several years. Mm -hmm. Oh, that wasn't in the last ten. It was horror oh, games. Oh, that's yeah, what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, you were gone. You were All right. gallivanting in Las Vegas. Ridiculi games. Games that are ridiculous. We all had... Okay, so every time people were like, you need to get together and talk about these things before you do them. I did, and they ignored me. I didn't ignore you. This it, list was difficult. And, and, and what really, you, I, I think I could put hundreds of games on this. There's lots of, there's lots of ridiculous but games that's out the, there. I what think about that make, makes them ridiculous for you, though? The theme, components, the what you're doing, all, all of the above. above. Actually, okay. I, didn't, I didn't pick any games that I thought were ridiculous based on theme. In all these games, I thought you did something in the game that was ridiculous. No, I did like not. Like physically did something or thematically yeah, usually. did something? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't approach it that way. I've got oh, some. I know one on your list. I've got some that are ridiculous because <laughs> of theme. I've got some that are ridiculous because of some component. I've got some that are ridiculous because of the very concept or notion of them. Right. So. I got some that are ridiculous because they thought they could make money off of this. <laughs> 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 All right. Yay. All right. Well, I have no idea what to expect here. So let's find out. All right. You can never assume I know what number we're doing, Roy, even if it's the first one. My number four, uh, okay, so at number ten, this is a new game. This is, I believe, it's got to be the newest game is on this list. Is it even out? It's not even out yet. It's not out That's yet. How so ridiculous, ridiculous is that? Um, it's just a concept. This is a game that is ridiculous <laughs> in its very notion. Yeah. When this was announced, I think just about everyone's reaction was, oh, come on. Turing Are machine. you kidding me? That's ridiculous. My number ten is Twilight Inscription. The idea. Oh, this is not ridiculous. Yes, no, it's that's a good call. No, Absolutely, no. You're, you're so. This wrong. game we thought was ridiculous, but it's not. I agree. I rated it higher than you, but I'm telling you, this is when this game was announced. The idea of a roll and write <laughs> set in the Twilight Imperium universe. It's supposed to be a two-hour, four-sheet roll I agree, but... The, it, the concept is ridiculous. The that's fact fine, that but works, you didn't put the concept. You put Twilight Inscription. Yes. You didn't say Mike's thoughts on Twilight Inscription in early 22. I'm sorry, Tom. You pick a category like this <laughs> that is so wide open to interpretation, and then you try to fight on the first one. This is a bad pick. This is a fantastic pick. It's a great pick. I like the game, I think, more than you do, but the notion of it is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous notion that... Roll and write, which the whole idea of them is, hey, these are little quick games. You can turn them over and play them in 10, 15 minutes. No, we're going to make a two-hour... If you have... How many people does this game play to, Tom? Eight. How many sheets does each player have? Four. How many is that, Mr. Math? See, you didn't say 24 that 24 sheets on a piece on that's a table. 32, you that's animal. Ridiculous. Or 32, see? That's why I asked you. Jeez. <laughs> Okay, okay, Mike's got heated here. That's right. Well, it's, you know what? Sometimes a, you got to correct people on their mistakes. It's I a, just did. Right. It's 32. 32. <laughs> it's even okay. worse than 24. 24 is okay. 32, 32 is more than 24. See, if you got off with the fact that it goes eight players, I would give you that. Yes. That is ridiculous. He said it, though. Again, it counts. I did. I like the game. 
It's a ridiculous notion. It's a it's a pretty. But see, I the mm-hmm. thing is, I know I agree with you until I play that. I was like, you know what? It works. It does work, but that doesn't mean that, that the whole concept and the notion, and that when everyone heard this, their first reaction was, "Is this a joke? Is this? Are you? you everyone? No one took this seriously until they found out that it was an actual thing, and even then, they probably didn't. That's take it true. Seriously. I thought it was a joke, right? Just like the stupid Arkham Horror thing, which. I wonder if it's on your list or not. Mm-hmm. Markham Horror. Mm-hmm. Markham Horror. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. My All number right. 10, already getting heat, is Twilight Inscription. My number 10 is... Markham Horror. <laughs> the stupid Arkham Horror. No, it's, uh, my number 10 is a uh, Freedom and Freeze game that I... This doesn't narrow it down, actually. Not at all. Uh, it's the only one from him on my list. Uh, it's a game called The Three Commandments. I don't know if you guys have played this or are I'm familiar not, with I've it. I've heard of it. I've How not played this. How can it be this. a Freedom and Freeze game? It should be called... F- it might be... Four Command. Four No, no, no. Well, he did it with the Lamont brothers, the oh, Fragor brothers, or whatever. It, um, In German, it might have... It might have. It has. might be, right. Yeah. So this one, uh, you are... You each are starting a, a strange religion. You put some cards in front of you that have one card there on the left that penalizes players if they do that. Two cards that give you points if the players do those things. Okay. No one has any idea what's on these cards. <laughs> this is like Maui. And on your turn, you have to take one of those pillars over there in that weird, bland-looking board and move it. You take one and you move it. Mm-hmm. Between you taking it and moving it and, and depositing it, you can do anything you want to. <laughs> and then once you're done, the player who knows the cards goes, Six points, and they give you points. <laughs> so you have no idea what you did or didn't do, and so the next player is like, "Okay, well, okay, I'll grab the thing <laughs> and I'll go like this with it, and I'll tap it on the table, and I'll lick it, and I'll put it back. Uh, Two points. I'm like, oh, what did I? I lost points uh-huh. on that. So the next player will go and try to see what they should and shouldn't do. It's it sounds a lot funnier and a lot better say, than I it kinda, ends up being. I kind of love the idea. Yeah, of that, it's a good idea yeah. that doesn't really pan out as well as you'd think. That you know what I'm explaining is kind of a best case scenario. Right, right, right. Um, the game play itself doesn't really deliver on that promise, but it is stupid. It's ridiculous. It's a fun promise. How many times in in the play of this game did you remove an item of clothing? <sighs> I don't know if it happened or did. The didn't. fact that he paused <laughs> bothers yeah, me. No, it's definitely weird stuff. Is it? Like, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, if you left the table with the thing, <laughs> you can get up and, and walk yeah. away with it. It's all sorts of dumb cards. Okay, okay. There's some normal, normal ones like you saw there, like don't play, use your left hand. You do with your left hand yeah. or whatever. But some are ridiculous things. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So there you go. My number ten, right. the three commandments. It's kind of funny, actually, idea, but yeah. My number 10 is a game I used to own for a long time just because I hung it on the wall and then eventually got rid of it because the game itself is not an amazing game, but it is very ridiculous. And this game is called Dart Wars. (laughs) So Dart Wars is Risk Mm. with magnetic darts. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So in this game, you are trying to conquer a land. Uh, You just throw a dart at it. If you hit it, you can move in. Um, And you have little magnetic troops that are all over the map. If you do move into someone else's area, then you fight. At that time, you both throw at the target. Whoever gets closer to the middle target wins the battle. I love it. Yeah. This is great. (laughs) How do you not have this This anymore? It's fantastic. Because, first of all, magnetic darts aren't particularly precise. No. Yeah. Um... And you're just kind of throwing. There's like no. You're just like. You can replace these with real darts, though. Interesting. If you made this, like, if you printed this image on cork. Yeah, absolutely. And then the target, actually, you would not even put the target there. I would put the target on a target. Yeah, yeah. Like, have another board, which is the combat Mm -hmm. board, the combat board, and the map. But how do you put the armies on the map? (sighs) How many do you need? Push pins. Yeah, push pins or something. Yeah. Okay. Tower essential. <laughs> yeah, can we bring this back? Call Let's the designer right do now. Dart Wars. Yeah, but for the longest edition. time though, this was on my wall because it comes like in a tube. Yeah. So I just hung sense. it on the wall, put all the darts and stuff on it. But I don't know how many times we played it because <laughs> it's just one of those games. People are like that is amazingly sounding stupid, dumb, great, <laughs> ridiculous, whatever. Uh-huh. And then it just doesn't ever get played. That's why it's number ten because I don't play it anymore. All right. But it's definitely ridiculous. It is ridiculous, Tom. All right, now number nine, my number nine, I think was designed to be ridiculous. Um, 
And so that was a, a little struggle I had with this list, is that there were games, I think, that were clearly designed to be ridiculous and other mm-hmm. ones that were co- designed to be taken seriously, and you're like, how would you think anyone would ever take that seriously? Okay. Really? I don't... I don't my number nine is not like that. My number nine, I think, was very much huh. meant to be silly. Um, None of mine are meant to be taken seriously on my list. I think oh. Dart Wars, that person meant it. They I, think meant they, it. I think they meant it. They yeah. had to have known that. Was... No, no. They, as far as they knew, there was supplanting risk. My number nine <laughs> is a game that, depending upon which edition you get, the, the current edition is Terror in Meeple City or, as I knew it, Rampage. I think this is just, you know, you're... Your, you're breathing on pieces. You're blowing on pieces to knock them down. You're you're spending a ridiculous amount of time setting this up. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're picking so up big stupid. pieces and you're dropping them on these buildings to try to get meeples to go. You're flicking, uh, you know, little buses. discs around and buses around. It is a ridiculous, but it's supposed to be. It's not. I don't think this game is meant to be taken terribly seriously. Um, I like but, how you say that, like, you think it's not, obviously well, it's not that's what I'm getting at, but, yeah, but that's why I had a little challenge with this list, because I think this game was trying to be ridiculous, you know. I'll tell you what, it was not trying to be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. No, you this game like is it? crap. No, it's not. You it's don't crap. like it because you don't like the the imprecise nature of it, right? Because uh, that's that's, the, that's these things. It's like, oh, is it on the sidewalk or is it not? It's kind this of game touching is the so sidewalk. light. Who cares? It like, really yeah, is. Whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. So but stupid. it's just the, be clear. There's a lot of games in this list that, that very, you're going to say stupid. that about. The most ridiculous thing about that game is uh, the amount of meeples that you have to go crawling around on the floor, digging yeah. through the high pile carpet to get. Um, and it's not a game that I necessarily think will get played much now because there's a whole lot of like a lot you know, of breathing, and a lot of breathing and blowing and yeah. sneezing and you know chew on this piece. This was definitely on my top ten games not to play during COVID. <laughs> no, no, clearly not. Did so. we do that? I did it as a small list of like I a board game. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right, you did. Okay, there was the one where you whisper in people's ears. The, <laughs> mm, uh, the number one has got to yeah. be the mouth one, right? I think that was had it was on number, the list. I think it was number one. Be. All right, my number nine, Terror in Meeple City. Good, good choice, Mike. Oh, thank you, John. That's a better choice than my number nine. I'll give you that. <laughs> my number nine is ridiculous because of the theme. This is a Leo Colovini game mm. called Familian Bond in German. I don't think it's ever came out with an English oh, title. Oh, th- this game. And this is a game in which you, the players, are secretly a genetic trait, <laughs> and you are trying to right. pass your genetic right. trait along from generation to generation. <laughs> uh-huh. So let's say, for example, it's a big schnoz is your thing, mm-hmm. and you're trying to marry people off and then have them have children that have said big schnoz <laughs> happening generation after generation. Maybe it's massive lips, big old ears, <laughs> uh, red hair, um... It's just kind of weird things. Obviously, the funnier ones are the massive lips and the big ears. Yeah. And then if you can have a thing up to three times. So if a character has the three ears, boom, 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 they have, like, big old Dumbo, <laughs> Dumbo ears, you know, and yeah. so on. It's just, it it makes no sense. You, as a player... You're a trait. Mm-hmm. I love it. ...are one of these things that is secretly your thing. <laughs> right. And at the end, you're like, ha-ha! On ma- the nose! <laughs> Massive ears! <laughs> I win! <laughs> yeah, so you're deforming people on purpose to try to win. I don't know. I don't get it. Is the uh, game fun? The game is pretty good. It's one of Colovini's best games, actually. <laughs> You've never played this? I have not. It's these games of yours I haven't played. The art on the cards is great. The the one on the the bottom left there, that that bottom left card is just super It's good art. It's real good art. It's funny. (laughs) That's that's my brother. And it's pretty straightforward. The gameplay is is good. It takes a little bit of the thing he did with clans where you don't know who's what color. Mm. And... Makes this sort of you know family tree thing. So yeah, I'm assuming this was never brought out in in. I don't English, think it ever came out in English. But no. I'm sure I used to own it. I used to own the other one too. Um, <laughs> eventually got rid of it. it but it's, but it's good. It's solid. Mm-hmm. Just can't keep everything. Did so you my own number Dart nine. Wars? I did not no, own Dart Wars. That's a, that's never owned that one. Opportunity. Number eight is the dumbest game on my list. Eight or nine? No, number nine yeah, is yeah, the dumbest okay. game on my list. But um, I was very amused when I first heard of the concept of this because I grew up. Well, in college, I played a lot of Battletech. And in Battletech, you attacked each other, you marked off boxes that showed like an arm might get blown off. Mm. So this game is a little bit of a riff on that and on a popular children's game. So this is Run For Your Life Candyman. Oh, yeah, This is from game, yeah. Smirk and Dagger. And in this game, you are these little candy men who run around the board. 
you're moving around. It's a, I think it's a roll move. Um, <laughs> but you fight each other, and you have these little sheets. They're not shown here, but they well, you can see one kind of underneath the cards. Mm. Um, and when your arm gets blown off by the bazookas from the other candy man, you rip that piece of paper off. Oh, jeez. So you're ripping legs and mm. limbs it's off a of the person game. thing. <laughs> it's a legacy game. It's the old G legacy <laughs> game, right? <laughs> the gameplay, you know what, come to think of it, the artwork, not fantastic. <laughs> this does look like a bad Kickstarter at this point. It does, oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. it does. If this showed up at Kickstarter, but this was... One of the first games Smirk and Dagger did. They they tried to follow it up with. I think they they did a spoof on something else too. But this yeah. one was pretty funny, and I I thought it was ridiculous. Be again, because of that, uh, <coughs> because of that BattleTech thing, right, it had right. that same thing. So just ridiculous. Um, this is I think the only game on this list that I don't. The rest of the games on this I actually really like them all. Mm. Um, but but th yeah, this one just so was st stupid enough that I put it on the list. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, oh, very ridiculous. Wow, ridiculous. Nicely done. Um, this list is one that just by its nature has uh, games that I don't talk about as much. However, my number right. eight is one that has shown up on a couple of my lists before. It's a game that I actually do like quite a bit, but it is a pretty ridiculous theme. Uh, it's a racing game, all right? Instead of racing cars... We're down to two games. You're okay. racing elephants. Whoops. Uh, yeah. And yes. not only are you racing elephants, but they went out and they got permission to call the game Formula E. Yes, yes, you I You're not like talking about this I game do, for sure. but it is ridiculous. What was the other one you were thinking? Oh, I thought it was either Camel Up or um, oh, yeah. the Dodo's Riding Dinos. Oh, yeah, both of yeah, those yeah, actually yeah, could okay. work. But, but Formula E, I think, is even more ridiculous because, uh, yes, not only are you racing elephants, which is, you know, kind of silly in and of itself, but I would you're, watch an elephant you're moving... Holy cows around the board to because the the elephants can't they have to go around the holy cows and you're moving mice around the board because elephants are scared of mice and so the the mice makes the elephant back up and you're yeah. playing uh, uh, flying carpets so these elephants are getting on flying carpets and jumping over Wait, elephants. I'm sorry, the elephant rides a flying carpet. Yes. 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 Also, if it's too tight for the elephant to fit through, you got to drink. You, sometimes you can lather up that elephant with mango juice. Mango juice. juice. You got to drink some mango juice <laughs> and, and they can go can sideways. Squeeze the elephant. I want to come back to the flying carpet thing. Do yes. flying carpets have a weight limit? I, I mean... I don't think so. No, flying carpets are magical, man. They can You can put anything on You can put a building on a flying carpet. See, I've always... I never wanted to fly on a flying carpet because... There's, there's no edges on that thing. There's right, no guard right, right. around no, you're it. Good. It's very dangerous, no, I think. There's you, nothing more more stable than a flying carpet, I've found. <laughs> what um, about turbulence? Mm, don't worry. Just hold on. That's what, that's <laughs> good. Why? Why? Hold on to the sides of the flying carpet. Oh, so you want a real thin one? Yeah. That's oh, really okay. scary. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. You'll be fine. You'll be fine, Tom. Don't can worry I have, about like, it. rains? This should be a <laughs> flying carpet should have rains, you know? <laughs> Anyway, very, very ridiculous concept. The idea of, you know, it's, a, it's again, a very silly game, but I love the fact that they called it Formula E. I love the fact that they kind of like, the, the, the way you play the game, you have either movement cards or, or special ability cards, and it's like 80% special ability cards. You know, yeah. Most of the time, you're just playing something really ridiculous. Oh, now I can do this! You're moving a bunch of stuff around the board. So, there you go. My number eight. Formula E. Good old Formula E. Mm -hmm. All right, my number eight is a fake artist goes to New York. Ah. This whole thing does not make one lick of sense. <laughs> you're not a real artist, so you move to New York to pretend to be an artist. Oh, cool. you're getting into the theme. I love it. Okay. And then you are you find yourself in a gallery, let's say, <laughs> oh, with other on. artists, <laughs> and you're all drawing the same picture together? I love how you're actually going for the theme on this. I just don't understand how that works out. <laughs> oh, hey, you're an artist? I'm an artist. Let us paint together. One stroke. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm very confused by well, the You're theme making it sound this. worse than it is. Yeah. No, that's exactly what it is. That's the exact theme. It doesn't make any sense. We're all drawing something together. <laughs> One person is not a real artist, so of course they don't know what we're drawing. Not mm -hmm. sure I understand that, but okay. Mm -hmm. And then we're drawing this thing one line at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that does not check out for me, okay? <laughs> I fear the people who made this game don't know what the word artist means. 
Neither did people who drew this particular yeah. picture, but yeah, yes. That's a song. This is a really good party game, but it's funny. I didn't even think about approaching it from the thematic. Yeah, because the, the theme is obviously completely ridiculous. It makes It doesn't zero really sense. work out when you think about, <laughs> wait, so we're not all... It's not that we're all drawing something and then justifying that drawing. Mm -hmm. We're all drawing one thing together. Right. One, one again, one sort of pencil or, or brush and stroke And all the one person knows what you're drawing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, has anyone ever drawn something like that in history? I think, well, how, someone else? I think that's how the yeah, Sistine like, Chapel was done, isn't it? No. <laughs> no? I'm trying to think. I mean, honestly, is that a thing? That might be a cool thing, but I don't think any artists have ever done that. I bet there's been art projects. You, you think know, so? Like, where like they get together art. and they're like, go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do it. The guy's like, I'm done. I can't deal with what you just did. That, yeah, that guy over there is like, oh, a fish! Mm. Got it! Maybe it's like a Pollock painting where everyone's got their own jar of paint and they all throw it on together. and yeah, you know That could be something. Mm. All right. That's my number eight. Mm. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's ridiculous. <laughs> my number eight, you've seen the ridiculousness of this because we played it live once. Oh, boy. Tomorrow, incidentally, mm. you're, they're playing uh, Cthulhu Death May Die, mm. the third one mm -hmm. um, here. Cthulhu is a... Deep, mysterious, scary thing, which in fantasy flight games has become pulpy yes. to some degree. Well, it's fine, but mm -hmm. it still has kind of this ooh yeah, to ominous. it, right? Sure. And so if you tell me you're making a Cthulhu game or any game about horrifying things, I expect that to be the case. Mm. What I'm not expecting is a straight-up party game. My number eight is Mountains of Madness. Oh, wow. So, Mountains of Madness, when you look at that cover, which actually could have made our best it's, covers it's a list. Very nice it's a really cover, cool yeah. cover. It's like, you're going up into the mountains, and maddening things will happen. Mm. And the game was like, also, we want you to do these <laughs> mad things. Uh -huh. So, you may have to shout after every time someone says the word the. You might have to play the game standing on one leg mm. to simulate your madness, and you have to do all this stuff without messing up to get to the top of the mountain. Right. If I remember the last time we played this, one of us was sitting against the wall in the corner rocking themselves around. <laughs> I think I had to stand up and go shout into the corner or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's live footage of that somewhere, uh, right? There is. We played this live at some point here, you, me, and Sam. Yeah, it's very old, but Oof. yeah. It's terrible. I don't hate the game. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, you know, yeah, it's so not my thing. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah, to be expected. If you describe this game to me, knowing me even a little bit, you're like, you're probably not going to like this I game. I do remember when this was released at Gen Con, and I didn't know anything about it, and I was all excited about it because, oh, a yellow game. Look at that cover. Rob Davio, Miguel Coimbra, what a great team. And then I'm like, oh, it's this game? No, <laughs> it out. really is. Yeah. It really Doesn't is look something like that kind different. Of game, yeah. It really does not. Um... Yeah, I just I, I'm very amused by that. Oh, and you know what? Some people are mentioning. You know, I can speak. There are stupid Cthulhu games, sure, like Unspeakable Words Unspeakable and the Cthulhu words. Racing game, whatever that yeah, was Cthulhu called. Cthulhu 500, the Cthulhu Kerplunk game. Sure. Oh yes. But this one looks like it shouldn't be that. Right. It does not. But then the actual play of this one is insane. Pun intended. <laughs> right. you know? Ridiculous. Yes. And that's why it makes it on the list. That's why I like Z. Mm. Quelfthulu. Quelfthulu. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, my number seven is a game that is um, got a pretty ridiculous component that drives it. It's a game that's actually made up of many, 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 many games. Um, here, let me. It, this is one where I feel like I have to show you. I can't just. Oh, I can't. Just get a describe. secret prop. Oh, I've got a prop. I'm looking for other ones now. Right, so that is a vending machine. Okay. Okay. This is. Oh, you hit it in a different bag too to be to be coy. Mm-hmm. I sure did. These are a bunch of bottles. Little plastic bottles. All right. Okay. So the game is called Tokyo Jito. Roy, can you put it up there? Because I've already forgotten how to say it. Jito uh, Hanbaki. G Tokyo Jito Hanbaiki, okay? Isn't there like 20 games in There's this like one? There's like 20 games or so in this, and they all kind of involve these tiny little plastic bottles. Okay, those are cute little right? crates. And you've got this little kind of a cube tower type thing, but it's a bottle tower. And okay. so there's a lot of games that then involve kind of dexterity or do something it. along do those it. lines. So what are you and doing? it's supposed to be, you drop them into the top. Yeah. 
Okay. And so it's supposed to, to keep some of them, which I think it did. There's right. one in the machine! One stayed in the machine. And so there's a whole <laughs> series of games that Falls built around these little things. That's what I learned. A lot of them are flicking things, like flicks, try to hit someone in the face. No, it's not actually a no. game. I just made that up. TM Delicio. Um, but yeah, it's a bunch of ridiculous games built around this kind of Japanese vending machine culture. Which I think is kind of cool, but the games themselves are, you know, hit hit or miss. A bunch of different designers kind of did it, you know, uh, did did little games. But just what a ridiculous notion, right? This idea of oh, so you have to put stickers on these bottles. You have to put by stickers the on the bottles. Yeah, mm -hmm. terrifying. So it seems so stupid. <laughs> One didn't come out. What color One didn't come out? One might say ridiculous. Say yellow. You win. It was white. You lose. It looks yellow to me. Is that yeah. like yellow? This yeah, is yellow. How do you feel now? Yeah, hey, see, <laughs> what are you I talking have a about? Now, yeah. <laughs> no one confuses white and yellow. Yeah, yeah I do. So the games themselves, <laughs> one or two in there that I played were okay. Some of them were pretty not okay. But Let's this is this is pretty really dumb. Like, this is definitely one of these games that this people is your were worst like, pick yet. You don't think this is ridiculous? I don't think it's a game. I think it, it was top oh, there's ten a whole ridiculous. Bunch, there's games. a whole bunch of games. No, actually. no, no. I agree with Mike. And on not this all one. of them use this too. Some of them are. There's logic puzzle games. What? Yeah. It's. I got rid of this. This was there was a series of three the library, of these. Yeah. It was in the library because this what? was definitely a game people were going crazy on getting because yeah. oh it's from Japan it's hard right. to find yada yada. But when I went through those games, it's like they just you know they shove yeah, a bunch yeah. of games in I a box. I almost brought there was there was a second series of three. I almost brought one from that one called Tokyo Coin Laundry that instead of this has a bunch of plastic washers that okay. you literally open the door and there's like little fabric pieces and stuff that go in there and you close them. Okay. Yeah. So he likes that better actually. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Choki Tokyo Jido Hanbaiki. Oh I probably, I'm sure I butchered Why are you that. hating on this? This is a good choice. This is so I, ridiculous. I guess. I guess it's you picked fake artists going how to New is York. This not how is this not ridiculous to you? This no, no, it is. It is. I'm just like, this is like almost not even a game. I'm like having a hard time reconciling that there's a game in it. There is. There, a bunch I mean, of little there's a bunch games, of little guess, games. Right? Yeah, but yeah. They're all like mini games. And again, some of them <laughs> use this, so some of them stupid, don't. I mean. It's also undeniably. What's inside? Like fun. Can I see the inside of oh, this? Oh, you can see the inside. Psych. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. They don't get stuck very often, I bet. Not, not a lot. They do not. No. Yeah. I've been there's trying. not that many. There's not that many places for them to get caught. Yeah. Well, okay, which one didn't come out? White. That looks yellow to me. <laughs> All right, here we go, folks. My number seven is a card game called Bacchus's Banquet. Oh my uh, word, this is old. This is a card game in which you are trying to either poison somebody at this banquet or feed them so much crap that their belt <laughs> literally busts as does their stomach and they die. That's this fantastic. is correct. I that forgot belt, that. that thing right there with the red uh, the red uh, belt with the your numbers, belt? that's uh, your belt. That's I remember You're giving game. cards face down and you can choose to eat and or drink them. Or not. Mm. And you give them back to the player, they eat or drink it. If you eat something and it's too much for your little delicate stomach, you burst. <laughs> okay? You cover the walls with your innards mm. and you are out of the game. You can also be poisoned. Okay, I want to be clear. The game is not card. that gross. This is like uh, Monty That's Python's how I play my <laughs> Meaning of Life, the beginning of that. Uh, yeah. You Wait can also go to, the you can go to the vomitorium mm -hmm. and then lower the belt, of course. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. um, it's, pretty, it's pretty gross if you think about the theme. It uh, is. Yes. It is. But it's also... The theme, thematically, it's not just about the poisoning. A lot of games have done that sure. thing. Oh, yeah. Where it's like, here's a card. Are you going to drink it or give it back to me? That kind of thing. Right, right, right. You can also overstuff people with food. Mm. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But again, it's like, oh, a whole pig? I guess I have to eat it until I die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, well, it would be rude. It would be very mm -hmm. rude if you don't eat the pig until Gotta death. eat the pig. Bacchus's Banquet. Really ridiculous. I completely forgot Definitely about this game. Mm. Yeah. Mayfair. And Frederick Moyerson, he's been designing forever. He does weird themes, yeah. though. He did Nuns on the Run. He, did. Oh, he yeah, likes yeah. this weird stuff. I mean, his best stuff. known game is the, the the Digging Gnomes, right? The What is that game called? Um, Sabotage. Is that what it's called? Sabotage? Uh, Saboteur. Saboteur. Saboteur, yeah. Saboteur. Saboteur. The little cards mm -hmm. and finding, you know, the, the hidden treasure. But this is a solid game from him. I like this one better than a lot of his other games. Hmm. All right, my number seven is just ridiculous because you are throwing... I, I, I'm pretty sure that when they made this game up, a guy had a cup with a bunch of pawns and poured a couple out and was like, 
I think we can make a game out of this. Uh -huh. I play this at almost every Dice Tower Con now. It's Shootles. So. You do? I've never seen you play this game. Yeah, yeah. It's always one I, I mean, yeah. at the retreats for sure, I bring it out. Wow. So in this game. What is this? Okay. <laughs> you're pouring people out of a cup. I don't know what the theme is. Uh -huh. I don't care. But the game itself has this, uh, uh, you know, like a cup, like a dice cup. Mm -hmm. You put a bunch of pawns in it. And then in one swift motion, you pour out as many as you want. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen you play yes, this. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so if you pour out none, you, you, you bust. If you pour out all of them, you bust. If you pour out one, though, that's really good. So you're trying to... Okay. You're trying to get specific numbers of these, and then it's like a stock market game. Mm -hmm. You're like, you know, put the tokens out. You get money, but it's so idiotic. So funny. Now I, I play remember. Time. I've actually played this with you now, and I completely forgot about it until you mentioned the cup thing. I'm like, oh, that's right. That stupid game. Yeah. It is stupid. Yeah, yeah. You know, it is. It's fun. But it's also not. Not it's terrible. fun. Yeah, it's, it's it really is. It's like a game. It's like not just a silly activity no, either. It's, a it's game like there. such a. It's a ridiculous theme. Mm-hmm. Then a mass, like a real game wrapped around mm -hmm. it with actual, like you said, stock market manipulation and stuff. It's so yeah. bizarre. Are these garden gnomes that you're throwing I don't, out? Yeah, the theme Are you a giant <laughs> and they're real normal sized it people? Be. It or? could be, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think this is funny. Like, if you come to a retreat, there's a chance you play this with me because it's one of those games. Also, I just played it at the last one. That's, because a I think possessive, it's silly. that's a possessive S there. You know what I mean? It's German, though. Is that how that works? I, I don't know. know. I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume not. Schutels. Who cares? Let's move on to number six. All right. German. <laughs> My number six is on here strictly because of the driving component um, that in and of itself is kind of an activity. It's considered a game, but it's more of an activity. Is really. it some sort of vending machine? It type? is not. That was just, we just missed that one. This is a cooperative game, a cooperative game that basically takes Jenga yeah. and puts it in the middle of the board yeah. and says, now you're going to be using this, instead of wooden, plastic Jenga tower yeah. to drive your actions. This game is called Sarah's Vision. Are you saying it's because you just saw it at Essen? No, I own this game. You still own it. I like still you own, it. own this. I own it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Is it in your to-go pile? But I'll be honest with you, I haven't got rid of it because of the novelty. It's I was not saying, I just the saw a bunch game. of good games you got rid of. Yeah, no, no. It's not the best game in the world, but there's just something about it that is so ridiculous of... And honestly, I think the game itself would work better. Even that Jenga as a mechanism would work better if the actual components weren't so... The, the, the plastic's too light. It is. It has to have a little more heft to it to make it actually work like a Jenga tower does. But it's actually a pretty clever thing. It's ridiculous, though. I mean, that it cover literally... doesn't match the game. At all. It I mean, really it is won. literally a plastic... No. no, I think Sam played it. I'm the same person as Sam, so... <laughs> Are you... I'm pretty sure it was like I, when I first started working here, you guys played it live. I'm basically Sam. I'm basically the same person first got as here. Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was in the old studio. Why are you just sure pretend I don't exist? I'm not sure. Call me are Sam you sure he didn't play the game? I'm not sure he didn't. I'm sure Sam did. I'm certain I didn't, and I'm me. Someone in chat okay. looked this up. Yeah, yeah. I feel I'm like... myself. I'm inside my eyes yeah. looking out. <laughs> I wouldn't remember in my brain cavity. Oh, you know what? Z was, at the, uh, Z was at the vomitorium that day. He couldn't have played it. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, so it, it's it's just a ridiculous notion. This big plastic Jenga tower in the middle of your board, and that's kind of what drives how you take your actions. And, and uh, you know, it's clever, and it kind of works, and it kind of doesn't, but it's very ridiculous. I mean, just this the, the, the whole idea of it, I was like... Really? They're going to use Jenga? I like the concept of it, yeah. and I didn't hate the game. I don't but either, it's, obviously. It's I've not a it. great game. It's, it's not great. It's more, like you said, novelty. It's a novelty more than anything else, yes. Also, what games did you get rid of, Mike? I haven't seen any games you got rid of. It's because they've already been put in boxes and so priced and put Was on. this Monday? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, right. well, they're in. They're in the ship. Yeah, you can go take. Up. I see what's go, up. Go take I'm basically look. Sam. I'm <laughs> Sam now. Okay. Oh, brood of death. Hey, Sam, hey my turn. number six is gonna be. Uh, oh, Stop. it's gonna be uh, bang the dice game. Oh, I don't put bang the dice game on every list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> you know what? This is my most Sam pick yet, mm. unfortunately, right now. Oh, wow. Because okay. it's about poop. 
Yeah. Oh, was it Pekinga de Alet? No. Oh, I would think I was <laughs> expecting about, that one. But if, they, would, if it was, I would basically have to say I am Sam. <laughs> it's a game called Locus. It's like bloke, blocus, but without the B. <laughs> And it's about. What am I looking I at? A video of. Uh, I don't know oh, what. Sorry, wrong. I have a video of Roy Z, Z playing with that tower the last game. Oh! Yeah! You, you got got, got game. No, no, you no, no, got no. got. <laughs> No, I'm not, no, that's not me. No, that's you. And you're making dinosaur arms. Oh, Z definitely played that game. I he don't forgot forget about who I play games with. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive, Tom. Um, I forgot. Talk about all poop again, Z. Yeah. Poop. This game is about going to the bathroom, going to an outhouse, in fact. And in all the cars show a person running up on this outhouse, holding some toilet paper and or their groin. You are trying to line up your people so that they get to go to the bathroom before other players' characters go to the bathroom. Mm. That makes this sense. is basically like in front of the elevator. That's right. I was with just more thinking feces. that. Right. This Which is, is what that game was missing, honestly. It, was, it really was. I would have got up another. Full this is a Reinhardt Stope game. So is it really? A, it is. It's a solid little card game with wow. simultaneous selection. Actually, I would play this because the artwork looks great. Mm. This is another one I got rid of, unfortunately. <laughs> oh um, man. But yeah, it's one that yeah you were like revealing cards simultaneously, lining them up, and hopefully ending up closer to the bathroom than the other people. <laughs> I'll tell That's you the, it. That's the theme. Really hard to get in the states. I don't even know why I got rid of this. I'll tell um, you, the cover is terrifying to me because you're. Uh, this is from the view from inside from the outhouse. From inside the outhouse, <laughs> and you got all these got, people that are like trying to get. It. <laughs> yeah. That is horrifying. <laughs> why is there a heart on the outhouse? I want to right. know. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. does that mean? Also, uh, that dog. Uh, that dog doesn't need the outhouse. House. That dog's got the great no, outdoors. No, I think it's a little girl holding a teddy oh, bear. Oh, a teddy bear? Yeah. I don't know. It's still so, terrifying. Uh, that is a yeah. very weird cover. You yeah. know what? I am really upset because the word poop <laughs> should have been like on my mind because that could have been like a good chunk of the games on this list. Uh, why don't you rephrase Someone that? mentioned the donkey poop list and I was like, That's a good I didn't one, even man. think That's of that one. one. Yeah. Instead, I'm left with this nonsense. Okay, so... At Dice Tower Retreat, the last one, I played shootles with some people. Right. And we were laughing about the theme of a giant pouring out people. And I said, that reminds me of another game. Oh, wow. Which is my number six. This mm -hmm. one you have played. Okay, let's see. So I'll the theme you. of this I'll game tell is... I'll you about played it. I'll tell you the theme of this game before we show it. <laughs> okay. Uh, a giant is hungry for fish sticks. So <laughs> he wanders in the Arctic and he looks for children. And they're running in their igloos. He shakes them up. Pours the children out of the igloos and goes, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were fish sticks, and they all go off and have a party. I'm not kidding, that's the theme of the game. The game is Igloo Pop. So That's the theme? It, it is. I don't know if it's a bad translation. <laughs> no, that's uh, the theme. There are children in the igloos that you're shaking off, right? Yes, but you're not doing it maliciously. It's because you no, think they're fish like, sticks. The kids fall out laughing, and so they now play the rest of the afternoon with the giant jumping into the, igloo, the igloos and being shaken in there. The kids... Are literally being shaken inside these igloos. Okay, okay. Hitting the walls of ice. You there? think you played ridiculousness? <laughs> You're just on the fringe, yeah, this, Mike. This, this pretty, okay, so uh, in each of these igloos, there's little beads, uh, and the way this game is played is, you say go. Everyone picks up igloos. You shake them, listen to them. You think ah, there's five in there, and you put on the card that has a number five on it. Okay. So that card has six and seven. So if that eagle has six or seven, you're going to get the number of children on a card, which is a certain number of points. You get two points. Okay. Some cards have a single number. Like if the card just said seven and you nail that, right. you get three points. I got it. And if some have three numbers, yeah, so you're like two and six, a six, seven, point. eight. If it's any of those, it's a single point because it's a wider it. spread. It's yeah, yeah. not a bad game. It's a good no. game. I have a nice library because it's one of those games that just, it's dumb. And people are like, that's dumb. And they play it. They're like, that's ah, pretty fun. Yeah, there's, yeah, not, yeah. there's not that many games that utilize hearing... You know, I could, the, what's the, the, the one, the... The, the, the tower, the tower one, one, more, more than yeah, 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 that's like only one of the only other ones I can think of. Yeah, there's only a couple, really. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting. Well, I guess those echoes. More than yeah. Rosa game actually was on my short list. Yeah, I considered it. Yeah, because I like the. I mean, but this one's more ridiculous because yeah. of the theme. I think right, I right. think Ego Pop is silly. Yeah. All right, that's my number six. My number five is... Um, How much poop is in it? Well, I mean, it depends on... Uh, I guess you can use your imagination. Uh, is it a used there's no, there's no explicit poop. It's all implied poop <laughs> okay. in, in my number five. Implied poop is the, the name of my band. Yes, implied poop is the name of the difficult second album. My What's number the five is the game of the name, decade. If your name was uh, Eastman... 
ease as a designer <laughs> than implied poop. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, number Mike. five is the game of the decade. It's a game that I can't talk enough about. It's oh, by it one is. of the most acclaimed designers in history, the Mount Rushmore oh, of designers, oh, wait, Dr. This, Reiner Knizia. This, the, this yes. is Viking Seesaw, baby. You know what's ridiculous? Right. Mike's, Mike's love for this game. I like the game too, but Mike. This game. Mike makes me want to dislike it. It's this is fantastic. Mike's bang the dice game. I play it this. Is. Yes. I I play this at, at the at the dice tower uh, convention. And shows, and it's usually people requesting to to, to play it. The idea They're out of the blue. Yes. The, no, they really are. I'm not pushing this game. Often. They wouldn't even know it exists. You're wearing a shirt that says "Ask me about my seesaw." <laughs> well, that's, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Shirt. That's also led to some very <laughs> uncomfortable shirt. conversations. What is wrong but, with uh, you? <laughs> look, I, it's in redesign. I'm talking to Brian Drake about it right now. Um, Ooh, that's a shirt. <laughs> that could be on the store. Let's go. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ask me about my seesaw. No. Uh, okay, that, Tom. I just sold you a thousand there shirts. There we go. That shirt designs itself. <laughs> no. Store.com. Look oh, for that man, next coming up soon. The idea behind this game is that you've got this little ship in the middle that's basically a teeter totter, and in the middle you can't see them because they're all being you know put on there right now. You've got some luggage, and you're basically stacking things of different weight and different uh, you know some are glass, some are metal, and you're having having to put it in the in the raised side of the ship and not tip it over because right. if you tip it over you have to take a piece out of the middle as a uh, as a penalty it's a very 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 silly game it has my favorite tiebreaker uh, of any game, which is basically if you have two people that, because you're trying to get rid of all of your, your stuff. Okay. But if you don't, and two people are tied maybe with two things left in their supply, you take everything off the ship and you put one on either side, and whichever one is lighter is the is the winner. So you can use the actual teeth. That's your teeth favorite teeter. tiebreaker? That's a great tiebreaker. It's great. I'm just thinking, I don't know if that'd be my favorite. Ask me about my seesaw. My number five, <laughs> Viking. Seesaw. Like, I like that. Mm. My number five had, was just mentioned two minutes ago. <laughs> Big Blue Pop? No. No, the, 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 the other poopy game. The, the... What's the other poopy game we mentioned? I the, don't know. Pecunia Day. Yeah, that one. No. That, that was a Sam pig. I know. <laughs> My number five is Mord Amorosa. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. This is a game about murder. <laughs> it is. You are in a building. The game is various boxes that nest, but when inversed, of course, they stack mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out a murder, or maybe you committed the murder and no, you are trying to get other people to get, take the blame. You're an investigator. Are you an investigator? You're, yeah, you're a police. Are you also a murderer, though? I don't think in the game... I want to go ahead and say yes. Sure, you're a murderer in the game. You're throwing cubes down the center <laughs> of this tower... And much like uh, Mike's vending machine thing, mm -hmm. they sometimes do not make it all the way through. Sometimes they do. They fall all the way to the ground. But sometimes they get stuck in there somewhere. And you're listening, trying to figure out where you think it stopped. Mm -hmm. Was that the fourth floor or the third floor? Where, where did that you know, uh, quit moving? Mm -hmm. Just by, by listening alone. And then you're putting cubes on this little accusation board, trying to figure out... Kind of who's taking the blame for this this murder? Mm -hmm. You'll pick up the tower, kind of like you know, reveal a floor by picking up some of the cubes, and then you see what's in there. That's basically it. There is a game there. It's actually mm -hmm. a decent amount of mechanical things you're trying to achieve, but the central idea is throw something down the tower right. and listen to see if you can hear where it stops. I found one of my favorite sessions of probably any game, but. Specifically, this one was playing this with my mom <laughs> at her kitchen table, which happened to be a glass table. I was going to just say, the the bottom, the, the surface you play on makes a big yeah, difference. so <laughs> we would just like, every now and then, we'd throw one down and it would be like, ping! <laughs> you know, that really sharp glass sound and uh, we'd just both die laughing. Right. It was like, no question, <laughs> it, it made the... it to the ground floor. Because <laughs> that ringing glass sound is, mm. is you know... Uh, unmistakable. Yeah. So, yeah, Morda Morosa is really out there. It's a ridiculous game. But you know what? It's one that works. It's one that it I think work. is, is a clever, bizarre, that I would definitely recommend. That's my five. Also, the designer's name is Alessandro Zucchini. So there is that. All right, my number five is, is uh, the only game in Dice Tower Convention history that has both drawn blood... And oh, cause someone to swear like a sailor. <laughs> I know what this is. Which, fortunately, all that 
situation you don't know about. Oh. <laughs> true. You've never seen it. No. This is Spiky Dastards. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of games out there, and the biggest one is uh, Jungle... Um, jungle Speed? Jungle Speed, where there's something and grab something from you the You grab middle. something quickly, right? Yeah, right. And in Jungle Speed, whenever I play with people, I'm like, <laughs> let me see your hands. Mm. Because if they have long nails, right. we're done. Because <laughs> you, get, you get injured in Jungle Speed. Yeah. Spiky Dastard said, hold my beer. <laughs> we want people to get injured every game. This is hard plastic. Mm -hmm. And the game even encourages you, like, if someone's grabbing for one of these, because you have to grab a certain one, they're like, you grab it too. You could slam their hand onto it. It's terrible. It really is. Yeah, it's terrible. I have a morbid fascination with this game. This I, is a terrible game. This right. is like a dangerous just, game. Just put razor blades on the table. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's the only let's thing not, worse than this. Mess around with that, the only right? thing worse than this is that game that shocks you. Yeah, yeah. That you stick well, your that's finger not, but in. That's not a game, I think. That's no, just, you can that's... make anything a game if you're brave enough. Um, <laughs> This have, you ever, one. have you ever played the original version of Mousetrap, where it was just mouse traps on the table, and you have to like... No. no. That's not a thing. No, it's not. You're not that old, Mike. <laughs> I need to talk to my brother. Okay. No. Look at the packaging for Spiky Dazzards. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. It's like... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> at least they're showing you what you're getting that into. That is true. You know, it is transparent. Is they're like, you have to slap these things. You know, No, it doesn't it. say that. It looks like they're toys. You're like, oh. oh, you can't tell how hard they are, you mean? From you the package? Yeah. Mm. I, actually, that would be a funny joke to have some that were soft and then throw a hard one in there after people Ooh, play it for a while. That's Ooh. hilarious. Yeah, hilarious joke. <laughs> have you ever stepped on one of these? No, have you? No. I, in fact, if I did, I wear shoes inside normally. No, no, barefoot. Do you? In here. At home, I don't. Yeah, I know. Should I play this with my kids? I haven't. <laughs> You should We're definitely play with his play. kids because he's. I played it so much. Wow. Why? <laughs> it's morbid. Was there ever blood drawn? No, but I have pictures of Ruthie's kids crying. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case, Your Honor. <laughs> Spiky Dastards, it's a it's an insane game. Mm. All right, my number four is a cooperative game. Okay. It is a cooperative rhythm-based game. Oh. Mm -hmm. What is it? He has another bag. Whoa. That's the same bag. Same bag. Wait, Tom. what's going on? When is he doing this and we're not noticing? <laughs> I mean, we didn't. My number four. Mike is like a magician. Wants you to be a hip-hop artist. It's called Hey Yo. Come on. We're going to get YouTube. So, no, you're not. There, this isn't like. Is this another Oink game? Yes. Yeah, I didn't do an oink game. He before. did one. Oh, no, so he didn't. it's a it's a fake cooperative. Uh, yes, I yeah, did. you did fake artists. Yeah, so it's a cooperative, <laughs> like, hey, a, like a game where you are playing line cards in a line that you're trying to match up symbols, but you have to play them with limited communication, and you have to do it on, on the, the beat. beat. And if you don't do it on the beat, <laughs> or you play the wrong kind of card, you get a uh, you you get a, a penalty. But basically, I hate this so much already. Oh, it's fantastic. Actually, this won an award at Spiel this year. Won an innovation award at Spiel this year. Believe it or not. Play that thing again. <laughs> I need to change the battery. And it's supposed to keep going. I do need to change the battery. But basically, yeah, the idea is that on that whistle, on the beep, you play it, you, you have a, a small deck of cards, and you're trying to create these lines and scoring. There's an actual game there. I mean, there really is a, 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 a game there. And, and, this one's better uh, than a lot of one games. It's actually quite good. It's true. <laughs> uh, I, there's a review on the channel. I tomato, actually reviewed tomato, the game. Tomato, tomato, I actually do like that the game. That tomato, tomato one is one of their worst games ever made. That one is awful. But yeah, yeah, this one is not awful. It's actually a very cute game, but it is ridiculous. This whole idea. That's true. That's almost playing Seinfeld, this thing that and, music. That's why you like the game. I do, and it also is almost like Toe Jam and Earl, which I saw someone point out. Ah, oh, I love Toe Jam and Earl. Very true. Oh, yeah. So anyway, very cute game. Uh, very ridiculous. Hey yo, the that card be... game to the beat. That could be rethemed as a Toe Jam and Earl thing. That that theme would be okay right now. All that old yeah, stuff yeah. is coming back. Right. They did they did a redo of Toe Jam and Earl not long ago. I thought. I think so. Why yeah. are you remembering that? I thought it was crowdsourced actually. 
That's right. Right. Wasn't it? That means it's coming out in 52 yeah, years. Yeah, 52 years. Okay, anyway. okay. That's my number four. Hey, yo. My number four is a crossover with Tom. This is the glue pop. Ah, I thought you might put this on your list. You went back to back with with the sound games. I did. Games. I ended up yeah. being that way with the two sound games mm -hmm. being back to back here. This is the better game. This is one I, again, this is another one. I'm not sure why I ever got rid of it. This is such a well produced game. Those igloos are fantastic, they look plastic great. quality. Yeah, the little, but, and the it, little plastic uh, discs that are wooden fit in there perfectly. They do. They slide. It, they it's hold, very it satisfying like, to put them in there. It's a really well-produced game. Mm. I don't know why I got rid of it. but well, you um, can access the library here. No, I want my own. I want to uh, stay up at night shaking these things. Uh, ask me about my igloo. Um, my number four, like Tom already said, I'm not going to mention everything he said again. Igloo Pop, great, silly game. Love it. Mm. My number four I got rid of years ago, and that's one I'm like, I wish I'd kept it. It's a family, party, cooperative, weird game. Hmm. Um, also, the name of different people at various points. It's Captain Clueless. You can exit in the library. <laughs> I've not heard of this one. Captain Clueless. Right, huh? one? No, if you can show the board, Roy, here. So Captain Clueless is a game in which one person wears a blindfold. Mm. They are going to drive your ship around mm -hmm. with limited communications from the other player. So you're like, ah, <laughs> no! <laughs> and that means you're about to crash into a, a thing. You have to like hit different points and cross. It's really funny to watch. Yeah, I can because imagine. Because the person is just like drawing. And you, if you've ever drawn blindfolded, I don't care how, maybe some people are good at it, but you mm. always are like, I just drew a short line and it was like halfway across the paper. Right, right. Mm -hmm. If you ever just draw a square blindfolded, it's amazing how, oh, how bad it looks. You are, yeah. So the same thing here, you can be like, okay, I'm gonna do this, this, mm -hmm. this, and this. And there's actually a lot of blindfold games these days where you drop stuff and but this one I really was amused at. Mostly because of frustration of the people telling you what to do because of limited communication. <laughs> sure, sure. So <laughs> four to eight players, so it's a big, a big It might be count. team versus team. It's been a while since I played it. I've never it played this one. This one I never never got around to trying. Mm. It looks like a straight up kids game on yeah. the front, but I mean it's that funny game there, so that's Captain Clueless. Mm, nice. It's a good choice. My number three is one of the first games I thought of when you mentioned that this was going to be the list we were doing, even though I was confounded by what it actually meant. But I was like, this game seems ridiculous to me. You know it when you see it type of a thing. You know something ridiculous when feel, you see I, it. I don't know how this list is hard. Ridiculous is... Only because it's such a broad category, oh, right? Okay. You can, you, can, you can approach it so many ways. Right. My number three is an older game um, by some pretty accla acclaimed designers. My number three is Dr. Shark, baby. Yeah. Dr. Shark. It's almost made my list. Yeah. I was going to say, this is not on your I, list? No, it's not. I hate this game so this much. This is Antoine Boza. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruno Catala, two of my favorite designers. Oh, you hate a Bruno designers. Catala game? Yeah, I hate this so much. Remember this moment, this, children. This is basically like a, a silly super uh, spy, like like Austin That's Powers. That's theme, right? right, right. Is, a, is a theme, and there's you know all of these agents at the bottom of a pool, and you're and you're reaching into this bag, and you're trying to feel for different textures and stuff on the back of these puzzle pieces. Light shower, baby. Yeah, it is a ridiculous game, and it also has this giant castanet. That is basically a, uh, a, a shark, shark head, uh, yeah. and you go. Tick, 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 tick. When do you even use? It? I'm trying to remember when I you. I don't use. remember. There's I only a, played there's, this game once, and I yeah. absolutely loathed it. There's a reason why you do it, but it's it's kind of like the the pawn in in Magic Maze, where it's like super oh, aggressive. Right. You're tick, 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 tick. Um, <clears> and it's yeah, it's ridiculous. Everything about this I game love is ridiculous. I the theme. You're at a party. You're like, excuse me, I need to take a quick dip. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is a ridiculous game. I need to go back in the water again. Right, right. <laughs> so right yeah. yeah, it's a very, very stupid yeah, the game. The back of these tiles are either like fuzzy. Fuzzy or they have like little like texture. Bumpy or like crocodile skin like. Right. I exactly. mean, you, I hate these games. I can <laughs> feel to save my life. Yeah. It's a little bit like when we just Your saw. Your he has no feelings. I have no feelings. Yeah. He's a robot. He did, yeah, because you, you demoed Cry that. We kept us. walking around. I couldn't possibly yeah. do that. Uh, the, the to, at, at the Taiwan board game design Yeah, I had booth. a game called Touch It. Yep. 
Yeah, right? it was in our vlog. Was? Yeah, I filmed it in our yeah. vlog. Oh, did you play that? I did, did. play it. And he got two at minutes. It? He got wrecked. Yeah, I'm bad at it, I guess. And I actually got to get it right. right. I guess they're right. But ah, I was, you I was, feel I was, the thing because it's like a, a relief. Bumpy, yeah. yeah, it's bumpy. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to know what it is from feeling it with your fingertips. No, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible at that. Did we yeah. get a copy of that? I really... Oh, man, I don't think Touch it? Yeah. Touch it. I don't know. I actually owned Dr. Shark for a while, but it did not stay in my collection. It's good just too... man. It's it's not very good, but it's I do it like ridiculous. the logo a lot. I like the logo. That Dr. Shark. I that, like the look. That, that title, that's a good title. Yeah. Oh, it looks like a shark. Yeah. I'm kidding. Everybody saw that, okay? This is one... I didn't say it was... I didn't... I wasn't saying find a hidden animal. I Everybody said it was a good saw logo. It, okay? This There's is an octopus in that yeah, image. There is. This is this is one that got me because of the designers. You know, relatively early on when I was gaming, I was like, yeah, I love a lot of they, a lot of uh, Boza games. Got I you. Love like Catholic literally games. got you. I got this and I'm like, this doesn't play like. There any was a mousetrap in the bag when he went to grab the tokens. This mm -hmm. is a game I played over at a friend's house, and it was just <laughs> immediately, like ten minutes in, five minutes in, I was like, I hate this game. Are you so sure <laughs> I didn't teach this one to you? No, I played at uh, Don's house a long okay. time ago. Is this in the Dice Tower Library, Tom? No, missed opportunity. Good, good. That's my number three, oh. Doctor Shark. My number three is Cash and Guns Live. Cash and Guns Live. <laughs> Oh, this game is this is terrible game. You heard, you know this one, right? I tried to play it. Well, I'll let you go first, but then I'll, I I tried to play this once. Yeah, no, it's fine. Cash and Guns, as you probably know, is a game in which you sit around the table, you point foam guns at each other, you're trying to like bluff or push each other out of a round so you can split loot. Cash and Guns Live is very similar. Except there's no table, there's no foam guns, it's you, people, standing around, moving around physical space, pointing at each other. If you have a grenade card, you stand, you put out your arms, and you spin in a circle. Anyone you touch, just get hit by a grenade. And so on and so on, other stupid stuff. Go ahead. No, I thought, when I first heard this, I thought this, this could be amazing. Uh-huh. I didn't see this picture. <laughs> So I got a bunch of teenagers yeah. and got a room and I moderated it and it was a catastrophe. Yeah. It's yeah. games have very specific like if you have to like pause yeah, and everyone's yeah. frozen and then like okay what do you have and I think you actually carry cards in your pocket. Mm -hmm. It's like no, it, was, it doesn't Gosh. work. There's a reason they don't sell this at all. 8 no, to 20 this players. Done. This is done. This died on the vine. Wow. It was I mean Cash and Guns was very popular the original. This came after the original. That's why it has that look. Cash and Guns Live is probably has to be the biggest miss that Rebo's Productions ever put out. Mm. And what else is there? That's well, there's this. that Santiana or whatever that. This is worse. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was a That's huge miss. It was pre Seven Wonders. They were still but getting very it much pre Seven Wonders. But this is. It makes the list. I don't care for it, <laughs> but it is ridiculous. It is uh -huh. one of the more ridiculous things that. Um, yeah, that's been in board gaming. This is not even quite board gaming. It's kind of like LARPing it's some, yeah, it's, meets it's, board gaming. You know, it's a little somewhere in between. So. Closer to like two rooms and a boom, I guess, you know? Like, <sighs> yeah. So there you go. That's my number three. My number three made the list as of last week, because last week is the first time I've ever played this game. Oh, wow. This is a catch of Palooza. You guys, have, someone here has talked about it for a long time, and I was like, I'm going to get it. I ordered it off Amazon, got it, played it with my family, and it was a hilariously good time. We're going to review it next week, actually. Wow. This game is Cheating Moths. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So, in this game, the base game of this, it is an Uno-style game, sort of. You're playing a card in the middle of the table, discarding a card, and it has to be one higher or lower than the other one. Mm -hmm. Why is this guy have one behind his ear? Because there are some cards, and actually any card, you can get rid of in any way possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to the rules, although I before we started, I laid some ground rules on no destroyed cards. Right. You can't feed a card to the dog. <laughs> the card can't go outside. They have some rules where you need to keep your whole hand above the table, mm -hmm. and you can only get rid of one card at a time. You can't get rid of your last card, and there's one person who can't cheat. They're the guard bug, and they're watching everyone else to see if mm -hmm. they cheat. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's so dumb. It's, it's so dumb. And you mentioned yeah. how you dropped the thing and heard it in the glass. So that's what happened. I just dropped one on the floor. But for some reason, there was a moment of silence, and it was like, <laughs> this card landing on the floor. And it just looks at me I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, it was, <laughs> you got, you That's got fantastic. Me. But mm -hmm. I was I was sliding them in my pocket here. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife like dropped half her cards right down her shirt. <laughs> the, the kids were sticking them in their hair. They were underneath rules. 
It's really dumb. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's yeah. It is, funny, but it is a hilarious game. It's, mm -hmm. it's who, who was telling me about it? Someone here was. Telling I've me mentioned about it. it too. Yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. played it, but I was familiar with it. I was also. I would familiar. never. I told you about it. Like it's a game that's been out for many years, yeah. so I've never played it. But I was familiar with the game. It's like yeah. in that whole cockroach poker line. Yeah, same line, right? Yeah, yeah. It is. Um, it's just really funny. Now, I would never play this with Brian or Joey. Nah. Because they, 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 they could just be like, there was no card right in <laughs> yeah. front of me. I'd be staring right. at him like, I. Yeah. Right. The slide of hand would be too much. Mm hmm. But, yeah, but it's, 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 I mean, and you could play it not cheating. Yeah. Right? And you're sitting there. And <laughs> That's if, not much if, of a game at that point. If time. you're the guard bug and you catch someone cheating, then you get to give them a card from your hand. And then they're the guard bug now, so now you can finally cheat again. Mm -hmm. But, man, it's just, it's, it's, it's entertaining. And then the kid's just proudly like, yeah, I cheated. I'm like, I'm so proud. <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> All right, my number two is a game that uh, originally was kind of hard to get a hold of, and it was almost like a grail game for some people, but then it ev eventually got picked up, I want to say by Hasbro, believe it or not. Um, that, 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 that means nothing. Hasbro has published the, the game where you flush a toilet and the poop. Yeah, I guess, I know, but this was just such an obscure game, Ooh, and, it utilized, uh, <laughs> and, and it, it utilizes an app. Basically, you take your smartphone, you slide it into this cardboard construct mask that you put over your eyes, and then you're having to try to describe something to the people around you. Oh, the what's game, that game called? It's called Mask of Anubis. That's right. And so basically, you're standing there in the, in the room with this thing over your eyes, and you're like walking around in circles going, okay, um, wait, what do I see? I see a, a, a rock. It's, I think it's a rock, and it's next to a plant. And so it's just the whole notion of it what? is ridiculous. And there's cards on the table. It's amazing to watch other people play. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, right. it's, yeah, it's one that's more fun to watch other people. But you can see you've got like that cardboard mask you put together, and you slide, you literally slide a phone in there, and then you're walking around with this thing, and you're trying to describe uh, what you're seeing so that people can have the map, the map that's out on the table and figure out what you're looking at and where okay. you are in the map. It actually works. I think yeah. this is the first game that used this kind of technology. First one with the I phone. did. Yeah, it's definitely the first okay, one I had ever cool. seen like this. Um, but yeah, I think you can get it, and I think it's called Mask of the Pharaoh in in English by Hasbro. You could probably get it now. I would imagine it's, it's available, but this version is the one I had played. Hasbro picked this up, though? I think. I could be wrong, but I thought so. This um, should do, like, this is the kind of game they. I'm surprised they don't push. Because yeah. this would do really well. Hey, kids, you get to keep playing with your yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, true. this it's would do well. It's not a new game. It's a few years old at least. Yeah, it's probably I'm closer to four or five doesn't... years old, but... Doesn't get any attention. Not at all, but it is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, that is Mask of Anubis or Mask of the Pharaoh, whatever version is currently available. All right, my number two is a game I used to own also a long time ago. It's a uh, it's a Haba game called Truffle uh, Snuffle, I think. Mm. Truffle Snuffle, Truffle Snuffle, Truffle Truffle Snuffle. Yeah, Truffle Snuffle. Yeah, uh, it is a game in which uh, you have a plastic pig's nose with a rubber band, you put this upon your own nose. <laughs> that is a honking nose. Inside of this schnoz is a magnet. There are a bunch of tokens <laughs> that you spread on the table, <laughs> and on the back, the, you know, the backs all look the same, but the fronts show different little mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And so you have like a minute or whatever to, you touch your nose <laughs> to the table, uh -huh. <laughs> And then you, since you can't see it, right. they have a little mirror. It comes with a mirror. So you grab it, you go over to the mirror, you look at it in the mirror, and then the box is part of the game. If it's one you're supposed to keep, based on this card you looked at, uh -huh. then you scrape it off your nose into the keep area. Wow. If you're not supposed to keep it, you scrape it into the no keep area. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to the table. And you do this for like 30 seconds or a minute, trying to, again, collect the right things. It is so dumb. I played this with my family a long time ago. I remember my, my uh, nephew was very little at the time, literally like having to run to the bathroom because he was going to pee himself <laughs> while he was playing. So he ran out of the room still wearing it, <laughs> having to go to the bathroom. But um, yeah, it's just beyond ridiculous. It is really, uh... it's really silly. It is, it's an activity. It's mm. a gag. It's a gimmick. Yeah, yeah. It works fine for little kids, but 
it's one of the more out there games I've ever played that are that sort of have props. This is one of those. Yeah. That's just it's a gag. It's it's really a funny one. So my number two, Truffle Snuffle. I actually saw a copy of this in Essen. Oh, one did of those you really? Booths that sell secondhand oh, stuff. Oh man, I'd have been tempted. Yeah. I would have actually bought it. <laughs> my number two is a game that I think you suspect is on my list anyway. Um I'm going to be reviewing this next week, actually. Um, the, the deluxe deluxe version of this. And this game is Dungeon Fighter. <laughs> yes. oh. Dungeon Fighter. So there's a lot of silly dungeon games out there. Catacombs is one where you're flicking. Although, for some reason, Catacombs feels fairly serious. Mm, yes, it's right. a flicking game, but you are like trying to make shots and stuff. This one I give up on. <laughs> all right, In this game... You're going through a dungeon and you're fighting a monster by bouncing a die off the table onto this target. Then, depending on where the die lands, that's how much damage you do to the monster. If it falls in a hole, nothing. Mm. Um, and But the monster might be a hard monster to hit because he might make you put it on your head and drop mm. it off your head onto the board. But you might be using a weapon that will add three damage, but you have to do, put your arm around your back and throw it. It really gets ridiculous, and the new version is even more ridiculous. It's got weird-shaped dice. It's The board can be elevated or mm. tilted, or okay. you might have to drop it off a ramp. There's all kinds of nonsense. There's four different boards you're yeah, throwing yeah, on. I saw, Remember, that's they had like cool. a big crowdfunding thing for it, right? It was. Giant, yeah. I mean, it's like a big old box, isn't it? <laughs> it is. For a really silly game, yeah. but, but there's a lot of content in it now, yeah. Yeah, and every time, I mean, you get like, ooh, a new piece of equipment. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's an arrow. But now i got to bounce it twice off the table. <laughs> oh, that's harder to do. And, right. And I've never won this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's possible because <laughs> I'm terrible at it. But it's, it's amazingly fun to play. But it's really silly. Yeah, I have a hard time just making the die stay on the target. Yeah. I mean, really? I had us all practice for a while before yeah. we played yeah. last time. I was like, yeah. let's practice before we, we do this. This is a good one. All right, so my number one, I, I may get some pushback on this because, you know, we've had a whole string of, like, really kind of silly and, like, very obviously wacky games that certainly will fit a ridiculous list, right? Mm -hmm. um, this one is closer to my number 10, whereas when I heard it, the notion of it was so ridiculous, I'm like, what? What was your number You're, 10? My number 10 was Twilight Inscription. Okay. Um, this is, you had a Freedom and Freeze game. This is my Freedom and Freeze game. Um, my number one is 504. I mean, to me, this is the epitome okay. of ridiculous game. Yeah. It, it, it's a like a mad scientist type of thing. It's like, you're doing what? You're trying to have 504 games in one box. Right. Using all the same kind of components <clears throat> with this elaborate flip book. Does it work? Uh, mechanically, maybe. Barely. Kind of barely. Works. It kind of works. But yeah. maybe two or three of the games out of those apparent 504. That's true. You can go online games. and people you can be like, oh, I mean? it's 467 is, That's an is the game, game to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Okay, sure. But what a ridiculous idea. What Again, what a. It's a bold experiment, yeah, it's right? It's yeah. insane that, that someone even attempted to do this, much less pulled it <clears> off. <throat> Uh, at least mechanically, again. But to me, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, this is the epitome of ridiculous, right? It works, and I don't think, you know, it's it's it necessarily... This is no one's favorite game, but right. there's no one who doesn't look at this and go, wow. You admire the attempt, yeah, right? The fact the that they actually the that they pulled it off. Yes. The fences, you know but, what I mean? But man, it's ridiculous. Just the whole notion is ridiculous. The idea that anyone would even think about playing 504 games... I mean, I think even Freedom and Free said that most of those were computer. You know, he, he tested them by he simulated them. Yeah, right, you're not going to sit down and also, play all 504 of these games. I know. I still want to know how that's possible. The whole ooh, we simulate by computer. How? You can't just say that. What does that mean? You build a whole AI to play it for you? I don't know yeah. what that means. Yeah, I don't right. know. Like, maybe they simulated it without a computer. They just sit down and they're like, okay, well, so what could happen in these? If this is the setup. And right. this is the main mechanism, and this is the secondary mechanism. What could happen? Yeah, I think there was Maybe a... Maybe they just, like... Right. There was a main setup, 
a way to play, and then a scoring. Right. And it was nine of each, but you were not allowed to use the same one for any of them. Right. So it's nine, eight, seven, which is five oh four. Yeah, yeah. You had yeah, you had a mechanism uh, set up and a and a it's scoring. Insane. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just insane. Yeah, it really is crazy. It's it's. Again, it's ridiculous. To me, this is the epitome of, of ridiculous. And that doesn't mean necessarily bad or whatever. It just is a ridiculous I, I wax hot and cold on this, but hey, he tried it. Yeah, gave it a no, shot, it, right? It fits, it fits on this list for sure. All right, my number one is the first one I thought of when I finally settled on what this list meant. Is it similar to your number two? It's similar to my number two. <laughs> I know what it is then. It is a game also from Haba, really hard to find. Not one I saw at uh, Essen, ah. and one I probably would not buy if I saw it. I would buy it for my family, 100%. I would, not, I would sanitize it <laughs> deeply first. <laughs> the game called Trottofont. Mm. This one is a game in which you have party favors, <laughs> which are so supposed ridiculous. to be your elephant's trunk. Uh -huh. There is a tree in the center that you set up with these uh, logs, and... Um, I don't know, tree branches or whatever. This thing is mechanized, mind you, and it spins. Slowly, but spins. Mm -hmm. You, as when you turn this thing on, are supposed to use your nose, your trunk, <laughs> to go brrr, grab one of these things. It comes back. While it's coming back and, and sort of being wrapped up, you need to see the underside <laughs> of the thing you just grabbed. And then decide if it's one you want to keep, and mm -hmm. therefore you do it again on your own plate, or somebody else's, because you don't want that symbol. <laughs> That's it. That's so dumb. That's it's such a dumb game. That's the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um I remember the very first time I played this. I immediately after the game went to BGG and rated it a ten out of ten. <laughs> 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 it's amazing. Is it still a ten out of ten? I think I might have changed my mind, but it, is, it was immediately a ten out of ten. Uh, it is so stupid. It is so incredible. It's mm. just unbelievable that somebody put all these things together and they were like, "Okay, done. Publish this." It's amazing to me that it actually works. Like you actually can pick those things up. Yeah, with it these works things. pretty well too. Yeah, that is amazing. It works really well. I think it must have happened. The guy was at a party when Vroom picked something up and he was like. Wait a minute hmm. now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's Get me Haba. That's my number one. My number one is kind of a, a little bit of a downer after Z's end because my number one is more along the lines of this game is ridiculous, but in a different way than the other nine of mine are. Mm, okay. When I first heard about this game, I said, this cannot work because mm. it's such a ridiculous notion, but it works really well. And that is QE. Oh, that's QE a, is this ridiculous is a good pick. This because is a good pick. this is an auction game where you can bid any amount of money that you can humanly think of. Mm -hmm. Except right. at the end of the game, whoever spent the most money loses. Right. But Mike might bid $400 trillion on something, and I'll go, 17.6 sextillion. <laughs> Boom. And that some games will happen. I mean, the amount of money, I've seen games where the highest amount of money was like $2,000, because yeah, that's yeah. just how everybody plays. Yeah, right. You play with me, we're going into the millions on bid one. <laughs> um, and it's just very, very silly. But the, it's a good game, yeah. and it works. This is mm -hmm. like a, one of Friedman Fries' experiments, but it does work. He didn't design this. But. Right, right. Yeah, it was, I was actually very kind of uh, surprised because they must have just released the German version of this at Essen this year because right. it was like up there on the fair play list. And I'm like, QE? Really? Yeah, it was, like the, it was one of the really hot, games hot there the because convention. I guess it was really available in Germany for the first time. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I like QE and it's a, I didn't think of it, but it's a very good choice for it this It shouldn't list. work. Yeah. I think. I mean, when I first I was like, there's no way that can work. Someone can break the game. And yeah. And you still haven't played this, right? You've been hesitant to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You I should try it. it. You should um, try it once. Uh, I yeah, I mean, to me, it just seems. Um, it kind of seems like the Canizia game. The um, what's the bidding game where whoever spends the most money loses? The, the high society. High society. Yeah, high society. Mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. like high society, but in that one, obviously, the amounts are prescribed. Yeah. And in this one, you can do whatever you want. Right. But it's really kind of the same idea. Yeah. There's that a... end game is the same idea, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I'll like it, mm -hmm. you know, but um, I have to try to see if I find 
that activity that you love so much if I find that humorous. By the way, Ben says it sounds like bookkeeping would be a nightmare. It's oh, not it's because really my not. bids are always to a ma <laughs> they always go up by at least a level of 10, so the other bids don't matter. It's also nice that you have these little dry erase boards that you're writing your things on, and so a nice thing in this game is that you can write little messages to the people that you pass them along to. I always have a good time. Oh, okay. oh I don't know that, but after a while I was like, all right, listen, stop using zeros. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at what the people said. I wonder if there's going to be many crossovers here. I mean, there might be a couple, but uh, I don't know. We had some pretty obscure right, let's titles. Take a look. Yeah. Number ten, the bloody end. That's this good. is ridiculous theme wise, theme wise because you have an end. You're killing people, burying them, and making money off it, and you're going, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a great game. Cards against humanity. I guess mm. people voted for that because they just think the game is ridiculous. Yeah. Number eight. Cockroach poker. That this is also in that same line as cheating moths. Yeah. I think cheating moths is more ridiculous. Cockroach poker is just kind of I'm lying to you every yeah, turn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's bluffing. Seven is Galaxy Trucker. Okay, I can ridiculous. See that. You you build a ship. This game is meant to be ridiculous. Six. I love this. The campaign for North Africa, the Desert War, 1940-1943. This is the game that takes I think. It, the timeline for the game is measured in months. Oh. Richard Berg, the designer, said he never actually played the game. Wow. The map is longer than this room is wide. Got it. It's definitely a legit thing that, for this. That's this, fantastic. This thing. I thought that was hilarious. It just made the list, though. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, the designers never played the full game. Well, you don't you didn't have time to play test it. I get that, but then right. don't publish it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, you should not publish a game. War gamers can do what they want. Uh, right. Richard Berg is in a league all his own. <laughs> all right, number five. Cosmic frog. frog. A lot of people keep talking about this yeah. one. You're a gigantic cosmic frog, and that's the theme of the yeah, game. Yeah, that the theme's definitely ridiculous. Number four. Dungeon Fighter. There yeah, you go. There, there you There's go, a Tom. Number three. Camel up. Okay. I mean, this is actually, I mean, the fact that the camels are riding on top of each other. Yeah, it yeah. is pretty ridiculous. It is, it is yeah. silly. Number two. Throw, throw, burrito. Uh, you're literally throwing these burritos at other people. Yeah, yeah, it's like a dodgeball thing. I get and then it. number one, which it didn't even occur to me, happy, happy, happy uh, salmon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a, those are all good picks. The sure. ones I know that mm -hmm. I can vouch for. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like, again, our all three lists, for the most part, really, or four lists, yeah. were really different. They were, and that's kind of what I expected. Okay, we only had one crossover, right? We had one igloo pop. Were any of our games on anyone else's short list? Yes. Um, oh, you said the... Um, Mortimerosa was definitely on my short oh, yeah, list. Oh, yeah. Mortimerosa, yeah. You said that was on my short list. One of you said... You said, I think. What was your... Uh, oh, I don't remember. One of them was there's on the a, short list. There's yeah, so remember. many stupid games. I was talking about... There's like Sticky Chameleon where you're throwing yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. The Haba has like a whole line of oh, just yeah. silliness of games. And, right. you know, again, I could have put that whole flush the toilet and the poop comes out, mm. but I hate that game so much, it's not making a list. Yeah. Wait till they come up with a sequel. Side-by-side -side toilet. Ooh. <laughs> the bidet game. <laughs> oh, that's good. Actually, mm. that's really good. Mm -hmm. There's a toilet with a bidet built in, so you're waiting to catch waiting the poop to... in the air, and every ah. now and then you get squirted in the face. <laughs> so some people are mentioning Ugg Tech. Yeah, yeah. I considered Ugg Tech. I thought yeah. about that. Now, Ugg Tech a is choice. a game where you hit people on the head, uh, and you're with... using like weird language. That mm -hmm. was on my short list. Sure. Prodigal's Club, a couple people mentioned. That's, very, that's, that's, that's more ridiculous silly. Theme. It's ridiculous, yeah. The I mean, game mm -hmm. itself is pretty serious, it's good. though. Yeah, yeah. Last Will, all the same, um, same thing. Handy's okay. It's weird. You played Handy, right? Handy, yeah, where you're trying to do the whole, like, you know, putting the balls in between. With other people, it's weird. Chris oh. Handy is my favorite uh, fact about that game. It's actually his real name. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's from What was that from game him. you were you putting the stuff on your hand? The palm tree one? I think oh, it's yeah. Palm tree, I think right? It's or palm, palm or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was You wear like a sleeve. Yes. It's so dumb. Yeah, it's very ridiculous. Poetry yeah. for Neanderthals. That's very similar to uh, mm. the other one, uh, Ugg Tech. Ugg Tech, yeah. So Stay Cool is a good one. Yeah, I like Stay that cool. one. Yeah. Stay Cool is a ridiculous party game for mm -hmm. sure, where two things are going on. Yep. Um, ice Cool? I don't know that Ice Cool is ridiculous. Nah. I guess it just is a cool thing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. See what else people would have picked. Mad Magazine game, I guess, probably. Sure, Anything from Mad Magazine is. Nyctophobia, you know what? I don't consider that one ridiculous. Yeah, that's just a... It feels, because the, the young lady who made it, 
made it for her blind uncle, so she made right. it. And it's supposed to be spooky and terrifying. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that I find it to be ridiculous at all, actually. Yeah. Oh, the game that comes in egg carton. You're right. What's that called? Egg. egg oh, um, the Hobbit game. Eggs. Huh? Dancing eggs. Dancing yeah. eggs. Mm -hmm. Where you stick an egg in your armpit and run right. around the table, and then you're like, does anyone want this? We're like, that. <laughs> nope, you're good. That's your egg you're forever. You're good. This is your game now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. P.U., the guessing game of smells. Is that a real thing? You play that know. every day. Uh, <laughs> <What do you> mean? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it this yeah, time? That's right. All right. Well, yeah. that's it, folks. That's Ridiculous Games. You can mention more in the comments. Um, that's it for today for our live stuff. we got other videos going up. We have one more live thing tomorrow morning, which yeah. is... Cthulhu Death, Cthulhu May, Death May, Die. May Die. Season, Season three, three, baby! baby. <laughs> so come watch that. See if they survive. We will. My Two money giant is that they are Cthulhus. Mm. It's like Rock'em Sock'em Cthulhu. Wow. Wow, wow. Okay, I'm calling that in the next 10 years. We'll see a Rock'em Sock'em Cthulhu out there somewhere. Done. Let's make it happen. Hasbro's on the phone Let's right now with somebody. Make it happen. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. And that's Cthulhu behind you. <laughs>